Hi there again. So welcome back to lesson two of module 12 in which we are looking at advanced integration configuration for EBS R12 with Oracle Access Manager. So in the previous lesson, we looked at how to clone an Oracle EBS environment that is integrated with Oracle Access Manager and OID. Now let's look at how to configure multiple EBS environment. First of all, is it supported and will it work or not? So that's one of the most common questions I get is, oh, I have multiple eBusiness suite environment like test, dev, UAT, OAT, or pre-production. Now one option is you have each of these Oracle eBusiness suite environment, you have corresponding Oracle Access Manager and OID. However, a lot of companies prefer not to have one-to-one -one relationship between EBS and Oracle Access Manager or Internet Directory. What they want is multiple eBusiness Suite environment talking to one single OAM OID. Now, that's possible and fully supported and it should work. The only thing you need to worry about or you need to do is whatever you step you have done for integrating first eBusiness Suite environment, you need to follow all those steps for second e-business suite environment as well. However, when you provide integration details, things like application name, when you register EBS with OID, you provide an application name or application instance or service name, those names should be different or unique. And in order to achieve that, what we are a best practice is use same as EBS SID or system identifier or EBS database name so that all those configurations will be different. So EBS will have separate, which is fine, but then Oracle Access Manager and OID is common. So what you'll be doing is you'll be creating provisioning profile in OID or DIP for each eBusiness Suite integration. So there'll be, if you have two eBusiness Suite environment integrated with OID, there'll be two provisioning profile in DIP for that OID, one for each EBS environment. Similarly, in Oracle Access Manager, you will have two or whatever EBS environment double of each. For example, you will have two application domain, one for EBS one, second for EBS two. You will have two host identifier. You will have two authentication or each application domain will have its authentication scheme. You will have two web gate agents. So like that you will. So all you need to do is configure first and configure second EBS environment as long as the registration names or when you register EBS, you use names like application name and application service name. As long as those things are unique, you should be okay. So that's about integrating multiple EBS environment with single OAM OID. Next is, look at one single same e-business environment but it, it's having multiple nodes what i mean by it, multiple nodes is multiple e-business suite application tier so this is a diagram where you have clients and you have ebs database and this, this is one just one environment for example pre-production in that for high availability and for having so that application can manage extra load you have two application tier. So if you have configuration like that, where your application tier is more than one, what you need to do, or you want active, active, high availability for access gate and for e-business with middle tier, that's also supported. So what you need to do is, first of all, before you start integrating, ensure that your EBS works via load balancer with multiple application tier. So don't look at integration, OAM integration or OID integration. First look at the multiple application tier works. Once that's working, then you integrate first application tier. So the OID integration will be done only once. Now, when the OID is integrated with Oracle eBusiness Suite, the integration happens between database to database. What I mean by database to database is it's eBusiness Suite database talks to the Oracle Internet Directory. So even though you have multiple eBusiness Suite application tier, database is single. And so 
you need to integrate with OID only once. Once the Oracle eBusiness Suite is integrated with OID, the next task is to deploy EBS Access Gate. So for example, if you have two eBusiness Suite application tier, you're going to register Access Gate on first node, the way you did for single node EBS OAM integration, and you're going to run the exactly same commands on the second node as well. So if you note here, we are running a AD provision. We are creating a second EBS access gate on the second eBusiness Suite application tier. Then we are telling that in the second application tier, we are telling OHS to forward request to the second access gate. So you will have high availability on the access gate in that scenario. Then we are going to say register the EBS with OAM. This is on the second node. So whatever command you have done on for single node EBS application tier, you do same thing on active active application tier, multiple application tier. OID you do once, whereas Oracle Access Manager related stuff you do on each additional eBusiness Suite application tier. So this is how you configure the multi-node eBusiness Suite application or multi-node eBusiness Suite with Oracle Access Manager and Internet Directory. I hope that's clear. Let me repeat one more time. OID integration steps are done once and then Oracle Access Manager related stuff will be done on each middle tier or each application tier. Now next is what you would do if your eBusiness Suite database is a RAC database. For those who are not familiar with what is a RAC, that stands for Real Application Cluster, that's a database. So you have database in Active Active. So you have, this is a database instance one and you have database instance two. Both are talking to the one in the backend, there's only one database or data will be stored in on a shared file system or these two database machines will be able to talk to this database, which is on shared file system. And this is my application tier. So this is all about eBusiness Suite. So if you have eBusiness Suite database configured as Rack, you can still integrate Oracle with Oracle Access Manager and Oracle Internet Directory. There are no additional steps. The integration automatically will understand that there is a Rack database. So if you notice, if you remember the configuration, if you understand the flow, I said EBS access gate will talk to the eBusiness Suite database. So the access gate will have instead of one database connection, because there are two now, there are two database machines, there'll be multi data source or active active data source from EBS access gate to the eBusiness Suite database. So let's suppose you have access gate here deployed on eBusiness Suite application tier. So as access gate talks to the database or EBS database, there'll be two data sources, data source for first instance, data source for second instance. And these two data sources combined together will be in a multi data source or more than one data source. So there are no additional steps. The integration is intelligent enough. So it, if it finds in my context file, of eBusiness Suite that my database is Rack, it will create the multi data source. So this is for Rack database. Okay, the next is, what if your eBusiness Suite application tier is configured in DMZ? So first of all, let's understand what exactly is DMZ and why you would configure your Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier on the DMZ. So DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone that exposes Oracle eBusiness Suite to external world. So for example, most of, most of the time, Oracle eBusiness Suite is used internally within company. So you never expose Oracle eBusiness Suite on the internet. However, there are some scenarios in which you might have a requirement to expose eBusiness Suite to on the internet. For example, you have I suppliers, you have suppliers who connect to the Oracle eBusiness Suite. These suppliers are not your, or not your part of your organization. Or if you have I recruitment, 
where you use recruitment module of Oracle eBusiness Suite, where the guys or the potential candidates submit their CVs on the iRecruitment portal of Oracle eBusiness Suite. In that scenario, your eBusiness Suite, one of the application tier of eBusiness Suite should be exposed to the internet so that end users can connect from internet outside your organization premises. So in those scenarios, you have to have, you might have multiple e-business suite application tier. So let's suppose one, two or three or maybe four e-business application tier suite application tier for internal and you might expose one or two application tier nodes to the external in DMZ. Now, if you have scenario like that where your couple of application tier nodes are exposed to on the DMZ or to external world, so in that scenario, in order to integrate such setup, you still have to integrate or deploy access gate. However, what you do is, first of all, you follow this respective or respective document about DMZ setup. We are not going to cover that. Let's assume DMZ setup is all working and fine without identity management or without Oracle access manager integration. Then what you need to do is, you need to ensure that Oracle Access Manager and ODS, which is Oracle Directory Service, that is OID or OUD. These components are always in internal tier. You never expose them or you never deploy them onto DMZ. These OM and ODS or OID or OUD must always be in internal or intranet or safe zone or application tier. Then what you do is you have access gate and the web gate. These are deployed on EBS application tier where EBS application tier is exposed inter externally, which is in this place here. So you have, this is a reverse proxy, but let's suppose this is my application tier and that is where my e-business suite is exported. This is on a DMZ setup. So my access gate and web gate will be deployed here. However, the web gate that you configure, that web gate will be configured in something called as DCC. This is a concept for Oracle Access Manager, which is called as detached credential collection. So Oracle Access Manager can collect credentials in two way. One is ECC embedded credential collection. And second is DCC, which is detached credential collection. We cover ECC and DCC in detail and how to set up all these in our Oracle Access Manager course. So if you want to have a look at it, maybe worth looking at ECC, DCC in that, but I'll cover enough for you to understand for this setup here now. So what you need to do is you need to configure your web gate, which is deployed on eBusiness Suite application tier in DCC mode which is detached credential collection, which means here. So let's assume your, this is your DCC, this is your web gateway DCC, and Oracle Access Manager is deployed or set up somewhere here in this diagram on right hand side. So any communication between web gate to the Oracle Access Manager will be, so end user will never submit request or username password from external node directly to Oracle Access Manager, they will always submit it to this DCC web gate. And after that from DCC, it will be on a proprietary protocol on which is Oracle Access Protocol. So what you need to ensure is the web gate that you've configured on eBusiness Suite application tier is configured in DCC mode. Then similarly, the logout will have the DCC logout so when you configure a web gate on DCC mode, both web gate will be configured in DCC and corresponding logout should also be configured to support this DCC logout. The cookies that get created will also be different for DCC web gate. Again, what the cookies, new different cookies are generated, how you configure DCC, how you configure the logout for DCC, all those and what is the difference between ECC, DCC and how that flow happens, all that thing is covered in Oracle Access Manager. So you configure this DCC in on the in the web gate of Oracle eBusiness Suite. Then allow login and logout URL of DCC from URL firewall in eBusiness Suite. So eBusiness Suite 
has its when you deploy an e business on a DMZ, it creates you create a or e business comes with a URL firewall. So you allow these URLs related to logout and login in that URL firewall. So this is an example of DCC where, uh, for example, this is my e business suite application tier I've integrated. It will create a web gate instance. We saw when we registered Oracle Access Manager, we saw what is a web gate or what web gate instance it creates in OM. All you need to do is to make it with DCC, you say allow credential collector operation. When this checkbox is enabled, that means that web gate is acting as a DCC. Though there, yeah, of course, there are some additional steps as well. For example, your logout URL will change to DCC and a few other things. But as long as a web gate instance, you have allow credential collector operation checkbox ticked, that's a DCC. So this is on deploying access gate or e-business suite in DMZ. So this completes this lesson. And let me do a quick recap on what we have covered in this particular lesson. So we looked at how to configure multiple e-business suite environments with one single OMO ID. Then we looked at if you have multiple e-business suite application tier, what additional steps you need to do to integrate multiple e-business suite single environment, but multiple application tier with OMO ID. Then we also looked at what is a rack configuration, which is there is no additional steps. And then finally, what to do or what configuration we need to do if one of the EBS application tier is configured in DMZ. That is, or you need to configure on that e-business suite web gate, you configure DCC. And that is how you configure DCC. Now, head on to the next and final lesson where we're going to look at third party or integration of EBS with third party identity management system like SiteMinder or Microsoft Active Directory or Kerberos or Windows native authentication. So I'll see you in the third and final lesson of this module that is integrating Oracle eBusiness Suite with third party identity management software. I'll see you in next lesson.